Ms. Davis, I'm Bartholomew Cody. I'm here to apply for the butler's position. Very nice to meet you. Actually, it's more like a major domo because we'll be reducing our staff size so the new butler will be taking on extra duties without any additional pay, which is why the last one quit. Oh, well, I, I think it's very smart to be economical during these troubled times. So this isn't a problem for you? No, no, I'm very good at multitasking. In addition to being a, a butler, I've also been a bodyguard, and I'm very good around boats, so I could do triple duty. Butler, bodyguard, and launch pilot. Emily, Nicholas, this is Mr. Cody. He's interested in becoming our new butler. Really? Why would you want to work uh, way out on what is, for all intents and purposes, a deserted island? Well, actually, it's poor Charles that I'm really interested in. May I ask why? My daughter and I are estranged, unfortunately, and she recently moved to the area, and I wanted to be closer in the event that we could rekindle our relationship. Oh. And, of course, uh, a man has to make a living. Of course. Of course. I think there's a little more to it, though. Uh, these are my references. I, I'd be more than willing to work on a uh, trial basis. With time to get to know me, perhaps I can dispel the young man's suspicions. Forgive me. I, I didn't mean to be rude. I'm just uh, I'm going through a cynical phase right now. You, you ready? Mm -hmm. Ready? Uh, it's your call. Whatever you decide is fine with me. Enjoy your walk. I can assure you my only ulterior motive in applying for this job is to be close to my daughter. That desire will not affect or intrude upon whatever is expected of me in this job. I appreciate that, Mr. Cody. I really do. And you should know that I am indeed going to check all of your references within an inch of their life. I know how easy they are to forge. I'm not worried. Good. Uh, my nephew and his fiance will probably be really cold when they get back, so maybe you'd like to make a pot of tea for them. Does that mean I have the job? It means you're on trial. What are you doing? Oh, miss, I was uh, wondering if I would be expected to polish the furniture. That desk is definitely in need of attention. You know, my nephew Nicholas, his instincts are very good, and I tend to give them a lot of weight. He was suspicious of you five minutes after meeting you. Now I'm thinking, A, he is trying too hard, or B, he's just blatantly snooping. Call 911. It's Sam McCall. We found her collapsed on the shore. She's been in the water too long. Paper fish, uh, she going to live? You can barely feel a pulse. I need a medevac helicopter on Spoon Island. <clears throat> Sam? Sam, wake up. It's Nicholas. It's Emily. Can you hear us? Courage. It's, o it's okay. You're safe. Ship. Ship. Courage. What about the courage? Down there. Sam, Sam, stay awake. Stay awake. Talk to us. What What ship? What, what about a ship? Come. Sam? Sam. Right here. Her name is Sam McCall, and uh, we, we found her on shore. I wonder what she was trying to say. How are you feeling? Much better, thanks. Good. You know, maybe you should have let the paramedics take you to the hospital. But really, I don't want to waste anyone's time or anything. Um, I just need to get warmed up, and no offense, tea is not going to cut it. Maybe whiskey, if you have any. Where's the butler, anyway? Um, I don't know. Now that you mentioned it, I haven't seen him for a while. We don't uh, keep whiskey at the bar. We keep it in the kitchen. Look, I really don't want to put anyone out, so don't worry about it. No, it's, it's OK. That's what butlers are for. Sam. What did you do to yourself? Not as bad as it looks, really. Are you feeling okay? You feeling faint at no, all? No, um, 
Maybe we should get you to the hospital. No, really, I'm fine. Listen, I, I just, um, I'm a little lightheaded. You know, it's the least I deserve for staying underway too long. You know, when I agreed to let you salvage my freighter, I didn't intend for you to do all the work for yourself, and, 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 and I certainly didn't mean for you to risk your life. Nicholas, I'm a pro. This is what I do. And why are you staring at me? I'm sorry, I was, I was just thinking about something you said when you were in and out of consciousness. Yeah. I said something? Yeah, it, you, you kept talking about courage? Yeah, like courage, like it had something to do with a, a ship, maybe? A ship. Courage, um, you know what, I think I know what, uh, what that's about. I was, um, I was under really long and um, I knew I was kind of in trouble because I had a really bad moment down there. And my dad used to have this saying and he used to say courage is enough. And um, I just kept saying it over and over in my head and then I lost consciousness and I was, hmm. I was out of it. But that doesn't explain the ship. I must have been talking about Nicholas's freighter. Hmm. Well, I'm very impressed by your survival skills, you seem like a very resourceful woman. All right, spill it. You're like about to burst. Okay. Sam's explanation doesn't track. I know. When she was half conscious, she, she didn't seem to be equating courage with virtue. No, I, I agree. It sounded like she meant a ship named Courage, right? Yeah, and yeah. that's what's so weird, Nicholas. Hundreds of years ago, the Quartermains owned a ship called the Courage, and it disappeared and was presumed lost. Family legend says the courage was carrying priceless treasure. 